Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and boy oh boy do I got some positive news for you. Now ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, I went into a surgery a couple weeks ago, okay? And I had a burst appendix, as many of you know, and it's a big deal to me because, not, not necessarily due to the surgery, but what the doctor had told me. Now, to understand the entire story, let's start all the way back from the beginning, okay? Obviously, I felt sick for a few for, for several days, went to a hospital, they put me through all sorts of tests, and eventually they told me, boy, oh boy, your appendix is burst, daddy, to which I was put into a hospital bed, and from there, I met the operating doctor who basically cut me open, took out this appendix, and, you know, let me go on my merry way. Now, this doctor is an awesome person, saved my life, to be honest with you, and I'm forever indebted. Now, the doctor said a lot of things before I went to the surgery. So, before you go to a surgery, they make you sign, like, a consent form and everything. And the doctor basically comes and explains what they're going to do to you. You know, for me, it was basically opening up three holes and, you know, I guess pulling out the appendix. Now, to understand, during this operation, I was already on a 50-50% chance of whether I could even have it performed onto me. So, there was a 50-50% chance that you all could not have seen me for weeks, if not months on end, where they would just be endlessly draining me until I was finally able to have a surgery. Luckily, as you all know, I got the surgery and I got out alive and healthy. Now, in this entire process, the doctor told me a million things. Uh, basically, even after the surgery, I'd have to come in for checkups. Because usually, there's multiple causes as to why people get appendicitis. And it's not as simple as it's an organ that blows up for some people and not for others. For me, it could have been things like a bile duct being blocked. It could actually be a multitude of factors. And one of those factors, one of those possible symptoms, one of the actual effects could have been cancer. And when the words colonoscopy get mentioned, it really does freak people out, okay? If for sure. Now, to understand, a doctor has to tell you these things, especially in Canada or anywhere else in the world. My doctor had to tell me it because I guess he could have gotten sued if he didn't mention every single possible scenario. And a lot of it was to, I guess, maybe mentally prepare me if such a scenario existed, right? So, of course, when you hear the words fucking cancer, it screams into your head like, okay... This may not be good. I mean, I'm really freaking out. To be honest with you, the anxiety in me sparked up like no tomorrow. And that's the only thing that could come into my mind. Now, as you all know, when I got my surgery, I was stuck in the hospital for three days, which was very freaky. Because usually a hospital will try to discharge you as quick as possible, so when I'm stuck in there for three days, it's kind of spooky. Now, of course, my entire experience there was really depressing. I couldn't see my family, nobody could come visit me, and I had to listen to the Food Network for 72 hours! That's the only proper television that they had, which was wild. Luckily, I had my cell phone, I was able to play some Chrono Trigger, uh, which, again, given that my mental state was deteriorating day by day, really wasn't happening. But anyways, long story short, you know, the reason I was in there was my white blood count was really high. Uh, to the point where no doctor was saying I was really stable enough to go, which scared the absolute shit out of me. Um, there was points where there was just a lot of pus draining out of me, and I couldn't tell whether it was good or bad. I couldn't tell what color it was. Everyone just said, eh, it's okay. It's good. You're fine. You're cool. Like, and I guess you're supposed to calm down, but in your head, you can't stop thinking. I keep getting drained over and over and over again. Now, of course, on my third day, my doctor handed me the discharge papers, but he told me I had really bad appendicitis. I have to come back for basically another checkup. I, I do. It's just par for the course. Now, of course, every single thing that they did had to keep getting analyzed. My doctor said he had to look over and over again. And even the actual appendix from what my dad told me, usually the procedure is they send it to a lab before they throw it away to analyze it. So that also gets checked. And again, before I left, the doctor gave me this giant like stack, like this entire report all over me. And my dad looked it over, he analyzed everything, and he said, it looks okay, it looks good. You know, as far as he's considered, it's fine. Uh, of course, the reality is, I was probably, if not a couple days away from passing out in my sleep, had I not gone to the doctor. To understand, sepsis is a real thing. And I was so bad, the doctor told me that, usually... When he looked at me, he's like, listen, I can't tell when he first looked at me that your appendix blew up like eight hours ago or eight days ago. 
And it really turned out that it blew up that long ago. Like, about a week, I was sitting with a perforated fucking appendix. A couple days later, there's a very good chance that organs are shutting down and I'm basically a death's fucking door. So, thank God that I went to the hospital in record time. You know, I waited that long, but I still went. Now, there's... Types of blockages that uh, was being mentioned in this case, right? And bile duct was one of them, which is which can be incredibly serious. But in my case, it was actually just an average block, like a blockage of the of the appendix, like uh, the opening of it. So really, it was just a blockage of the less serious variety that actually caused the entire thing. Had it been much more serious, involving the gallbladder and things like that, it could have been very bad. And those things also uh, can lead to some really nasty um, implications going forward but at that point once we had realized what the cause was it was like the most common like take a breath you're all cool uh one of the scariest things as well too is my doctor kept using the word abscess which he told me since i had so much pus inside me he was gonna be worried that they were gonna ct scan me again just to see if there was actually still pus left in me to which my dad said, there's really no chance because A, you're not really getting sick anymore and uh, you seem to be doing fine. Like, your recovery is really good. But, again, this is the wild thing. This is what freaked me out. And my dad and my doctor still can't explain it. Basically, if, if I still had an abscess, they would stick a needle in to me and just draw it out. Now, I don't know how good, I don't know how, like, good the aim is, or, like, how much you, I guess it's kind of like engineering. When you've done something enough, you tend to get really good at it. But again, this is the human body we're dealing with. I'm like, how do you get so good that you're able to just draw it out of me like that, especially with some needle? I mean, how big is this needle going to be? I should have asked those questions, but I really didn't want to because it would have just caused me more anxiety. Long story short, again... Uh, the entire ra the entire reasoning for my medical problem was literally the most common solution for appendicitis, and that's pretty much what it is. For me, I was lucky enough that things like a colonoscopy were never even in the question after they found that out. Once that had come to the once that had come out, I was just good and gravy and ready to go. And in in all aspects, it really th this to me, to be honest with you, the reason why I keep remembering it is that this is like my life and death experience moment, right? Like one of those moments where it was something that kind of happens really common but i i guess maybe in my case it was the extreme end of it happening you know it, it scares the absolute piss out of me to think that in a couple days if i had not gone to a doctor it would have absolutely exacerbated the situation and i would have been just absolutely like i would i i don't know i would have been gone it freaks the heck out of me i still remember for eight days being completely sick and absolutely shivering every night to the point where i had fired up a fireplace just to sleep in front of it and still shivered it's insanity but i had good information to share with you and luckily luckily ladies and gentlemen we dodged the cancer train and even on that thought i have to be honestly just thankful that we as a community are around and you guys are basically my family at this point like i consider you all extended family and to me I i'm still a positive person had i gotten had, had the worst diagnosis have happened had they told me had had i had to go through a colonoscopy and it turns out there would have been something malignant in me honestly it is what it is, okay? Regardless of how the worst would have happened, we would have ended up going through with it. I'm not a quitter. I wouldn't have given up regardless of the situation. And that that's how the story comes out to. Yeah, it would have raised my anxiety. And yeah, I would have definitely thrown myself into a slump. But it's not something to give up over. And honestly, after all of this entire experience and the days that have gone by in me just sitting and waiting to have this follow-up and go and finally get all of my answers cleared and to understand why this happened, I am clear, I am set to go, and uh, we dodged a complete bullet, ladies and gentlemen, I must tell you. So, yeah, I just wanted to fill you in on the real positive news. Once I got it, I was like, I have, I have got to relay it to you all, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you all for sticking by me. Thank you all for being part of the Some Ordinary Gamers community. I have got an amazing, juicy, poor shaming computer building video for you tomorrow. So if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am.